Aye. Yep. Everybody. I'm Rachel Morgan Caesar. I'm from the Mayor's Office of Constituent Services. And on his behalf, I just want to welcome you all to this conversation and we look forward to learning more about the community. Um, and uh, 
by Deputy Mayor McCain uh, from City of Gary, participating in that steering committee for the last several years. Quarterly, and we're really here to provide um, guidance um, and and listen and, and work with the community in drafting this boundary. And it's really about you know how do we promote the fact that uh, the state of Indiana, federal government, local communities have gotten together and they're putting in a lot of infrastructure money and improving the South Shore uh, with a double track in Michigan City, um, as well as um, an extension of the West Lake Line and South Dyer. And, and how does this allow uh, for Northwest Indiana to compete um, at a, a deeper level um, with the Chicago metro region, um, knowing that we are so close um, to Illinois. And so the rail project itself, um, the Gary Metro station is not included in the double track um, project because technically the double track starts just east of Gary. Miller is included in the double track project see a new station there that's funded by this effort. So what this is going to do for Gary though is uh, of course improve the station in the Miller area and then subsequent to this project um, the RBA state legislature uh, Senator Melton uh, Mayor Prince all got together and uh, helped put together some legislation to fund uh, a new station in the downtown area. We're not here to talk about the specifics of that, but that's a major catalyst for uh, economic development uh, that, that really can be uh, thought of. I think it's a once in a generation um, opportunity um, to reimagine and, and reinvest in the community. We've seen communities all over the, the Illinois uh, suburbs, no matter where you are, um, even the cities in, in Illinois outside of Chicago, um, that have seen growth of population, growth of construction, and real estate uh, value changes when they have new stations uh, that are built in, in their areas. And so what we're going to talk about today is the basics of transit development districts, how they're unique. This is unique legislation to Northwest Indiana. The process that we've gone through to arrive at this draft boundary. Uh, other goals um, of the cities that we're taking into account as we're working on this, and then the, the transit development boundary, previewing that boundary and how we arrive at it. Another thing that um, I want to uh, emphasize for everybody is we do have a project website, www.nwipd.com. We have new information um, for the downtown area. On that website, there's also information for the Miller area and then all the other communities we've been working in, in Northwest Indiana on that site. So. Uh, we'll also have a full video recording um, from uh, today's meeting that includes any questions and discussion um, up on that website as well as be on the RBA's YouTube page. And we'll work with um, the City Office of Communication to get it up on uh, the City's uh, Facebook and social media as well. So boundary basics, what you should know. So the, the focus of this transit development district, this TDD, is to promote transit-oriented development. Think of that as, you know, honestly, what exists in the downtown area with walkability with buses, um, walkable areas. And really, this is an opportunity to promote that kind of development. It's another economic development tool. And communities need, you know, all kinds of economic development tools to allow for investment to occur. Um, so that's what this boundary is all about. That's why that legislation was created. And this is not just a boundary. This is really an opportunity for the city of Gary to work with the RDA to complement uh, the individual growth path of this community. Uh, a TV is um, a half mile of 320 acres special economic development district. This is an opportunity to realize economic development and it's formed by comprehensive analysis project. We've talked about this uh, for a couple years now in kind of preparation for this. This is not zoning or comprehensive planning. Uh, for a city or for a town, it's part of the process in this case, city or eminent domain. So we're not looking at acquiring property. Uh, this is not the real project, but uh, it's important to, to clarify what this is and what this is not. So this is a, a boundary, a contiguous boundary drawn around the station area. So it must include the station proper, no more than a half square mile of 320 acres in area. It can be expanded once. 
city of Gary would then go to the RBA and say, hey, we are ready to expand our boundary. Uh, that boundary can be expanded up to one square mile, 640 acres. Once between now and 2047, when this is an example. Uh, this is not the Gary boundary, but it's an example showing that the boundary can be organic in shape. And you'll see that when I show you the actual boundary here in a bit. Um, the way that this works is these districts capture incremental growth in income, property tax, revenue, or reinvestment back in the boundary. So it's important to note that any dollars collected, any grants given, any uh, financial assistance, technical assistance given is directed towards that boundary. Uh, since the city of Gary has a boundary in uh, Miller as well, um, there's an opportunity for those two boundaries to work together and leverage projects. Um, that's one specific clarification. But again, emphasizing revenue collected from the district spent in the district um, and the local community all main uses of the control. So uh, this is not a, an effort of the RPA to take control of the local unit, the local unit controls everything. And there'll be an MOA between the RPA, so a memorandum of agreement between the RPA and, and the city of Gary, uh, controlling how the funds work and how um, that then is going to be back. Here, including the budget. Sure. And if this is coming up, feel free to wait yes. to answer. But um, I'd like to understand a little bit better the, how the financial management of the funds happens. So who who's like approving how the money gets spent? Is that a public process? David, you want to take that? Sure, I'm happy to. Um, and we are getting into that, but may not be that specific for the question. But essentially, the TDD incremental dollars that are captured um, flow to the RBA. Statute, state statute requires the RDA to establish a fund for each and every TDD that they establish. And then the statute also says that you know, here's what the dollars can be used for. So the, um, the underlying statute that dictates what the dollars can be used for, and then the disbursement of the dollars back to the community, there would be actually there would be a um, public RDA, that the RDA board would, would act on each disbursement. It would be a public hearing for the RDA board. Okay, so then the city government, in some fashion, is is part of the process of identifying. The yeah, it's, and, and I don't know that we'll get into this detail, but <coughs> essentially the way that we have this set up is the city or the town is the um, applicant. Will for those dollars. And so if, if there's a development that's occurring, uh, the developer works with the community and goes through all the land use, goes through all of the community processes that they normally go through now when doing some sort of public development with the city. And then and then there's an application to the RDA for additional TDD dollars to come in to support the development. And that all flows through the City in this case, does that answer your question? And we know that there's tax increment financing for the districts that exist today. Um, we've got a map later on that shows that. There's also a map that works. The way that this is designed is it won't negatively impact um, any local debt in those tax increment districts. Um, it provides an additional uh, opportunity. Revenue um, through the capture of uh, any tax revenue, uh, incremental income tax revenue for people who work in the districts. It's also important to note that that doesn't raise taxes and it does not uh, decrease the amount of money that um, the fire department or the schools get. Um, it's money that, to Dave can explain it better, that um, is downstate in the reserve and is essentially to reinvest it back in this district. So it's a positive thing in, in that there is another revenue source. It's not a huge revenue source, but everything helps. And then the other kind of benefit here is um, as development gets going and as a revenue is generated in the community, um, the RDA can collaborate with the city of Gary on um, RDA issuing debt or grants or other assistance uh, that is positive. 
positive because it doesn't negatively um, impact the city of Gary's debt ceiling because the bonds or debt that they report is still That's another potential benefit of, of this boundary gap. Question. Hey Dave, we couldn't hear it. Oh, okay, question was, the question was: the question was, um, has the MOA already been negotiated oh. between the city and the RDA? No. And the, and the answer is no. Um, once the PDD gets established, then there would be um, a negotiation with with the city on what's the split of the PDD, and that's and that'll it'll be an evolving. Thing, quite honestly, I, we think. I mean, the way the way that we're thinking about this is more more than likely each and every development that occurs would be recognized under the MOA as kind of a rediscussion of how that's going to be interpreted. And then it will be something else, kind of like a typical development deal that occurs between the city. That process that you just described, will that happen this year or next year or this far far down out? Um, I, if, if I, don't, I don't, I wouldn't anticipate it happening this year. And I say that only, we, we have, the RDA created seven TDDs last year, um, trying to do three more this year. The seven that have been created, the negotiations um, have not started with those two. So, I mean, it's taken a little bit of time. I mean, this is a new process. The RDA is working through this with the communities. So, I would not anticipate it that it could be standing next year. Well, this is, you know, an opportunity for public input, education. Uh, we're going to have two more opportunities after this with the RDA board. So, uh, there'll be one in September, one in October. And the process is such that once those two hearings are held, we have this kind of letter of support from um, the mayor's office. Um, then we take it downstate for review and provide what's called the state budget committee, which is um, a group um, of legislators, bipartisan group of legislators uh, downstate that um, with that approve this and then it goes to the So. Um, we're looking to get that done for um, this community, uh, for um, South Boundary Payment, and for a boundary for the season. Uh, the issue. Do you want to know the date for the public hearing? Okay. And the location of the Sunday night? Yeah, the, the public hearing will be taking place um, uh, immediately after our uh, the RDA Board of Directors meetings uh, on November. September 14th uh, and uh, October 12th. Uh, they'll be at uh, I believe it's 10 a.m. Uh, and uh, they'll be held in Crown Point at the RDA headquarters. For the open? Hmm? Gary public meeting? Yeah, public Gary meeting. Crown Point? Yeah. So they're not going to be any additional public meetings in here? No, that's why we had this meeting here tonight so that we could have at least one opportunity to have a meeting in the community. Uh, we will be Putting up a link on Zoom so people can join in via Zoom, uh, make any public comments that they want to make, and we'll be accepting public comments um, by uh, by email or letter um, through the uh, second uh, public hearing. And how will that notice go out to the citizens? Pardon me? How will that notice go out to the citizens? By the coming meeting? How the citizens be notified? Right, that, that'll be. Uh, that, that's already been published in both the, uh, the legal notices in the uh, Times and the uh, Post Tribune. Uh, it'll be going out probably tomorrow on our, uh, on our Facebook uh, page. Uh, I've just not put it up because we have so many public meetings going to try to be a yes. So, this may be a question for Ms. Meredith Caesar. Does this come before City Council? Like, does the Council have to approve this or does this just? Go through the administration to whether or not to move forward with this. So, as it relates to the the boundaries specifically, well, I guess 
is it a done deal like that we're creating this and what's up for discussion is just the boundaries or is whether or not to do this still in discussion? Understood. I think that might be a better question um, than the answer. Because I'm just also wondering if there are public participation opportunities, right. like if it is coming before city council or the plan commission or something sure. like that, if there's other opportunities in the city for people to participate. The way it's set up um, is that um, we will um, work with the administration. We ask for um, a letter of support to advance the boundary. Uh, we will work with the administration to um, accept any feedback and make changes up to that October meeting. Uh, it'd be up to the city whether or not they want to bring before the council their, their plan commission rezoning admission. That's it's really up to each individual to make some do, some no. Um, and then the reason that there's an expansion opportunity for that boundary is if something's not captured the first go around that uh, may be considered in the future, there's that opportunity to double the boundary. So that's the other um, safeguard that, that we've built in to make sure that, you know, let's say there's an opportunity that comes up that, that um, is not on the radar screen, that it's not either the RJ or the city today, mm -hmm. it's in a year that um, that boundary can then be expanded. We expect to expand um, at least several of those boundaries here. That's you know that's why it's not continued. Um, how this process works, it does not require a full uh, resolution or full anything like that of, of the council. Um, but we do ask for a letter of support. Some communities it comes from the mayor. Some communities it comes from the mayor and the council. And but it's really up to the whole community on how they do. It. So. Uh, boundary process. So, how we've been working with this. Um, like I said, we've been working with the city very closely on this. Um, in addition to the, the people um, that are part of the team, um, we have textile development um, uh, consultants, um, GIP Potter helping us as well. And so, we're at a point now where we've drafted the boundary, we've taken feedback, we've broken the revised. And that you can find once more to add things to the community. And the criteria we've used is quantitative, qualitative, and very specific. So um, we've done a deep dive on previous plans that the city's had. We've had a lot of conversations with um, city staff and leadership. And then we've been boots on the ground, walking around <coughs> the properties. Um, Thinking about opportunities, um, working closely um, with experts to understand, you know, what can the market support today, what can the market support if, for instance, there's investment in this. And so, some of the criteria we've been looking at is acreage, ownership, vacancy status, current use, future land use or plan use, <laughs> access, location, availability, proximity to station, different. Conditions and structure, if it's in a tip or opportunity zone, and then what is the comprehensive impact? Because we, as we draw this boundary, it's really about how do we make sure that the boundary is drawn in such a way that the properties in the boundary are those properties that are most likely to have investment or redevelopment in the future, um, or public properties that could benefit from being in that community boundary. So, as we think about strategies about adaptive use, preservation, strengthening infill, so filling in the gaps, and in some cases, redevelopment. And so, we really thought carefully about you know, the goals of the community, the qualities and conditions, goals of the community, and economic development goals. So, um, this is um, from the city, from the planning, uh, replace the, the metro station with the ADA accessible station, um, collaboration with both NICTI and GPTC in this regard, promote transit mixed use uh, development around the station area, uh, redesign Broadway as what's called a complete street. And that's a new term that that term is all about 
uh, multimodal functionality to safe process for pedestrians, um, and an opportunity also to study two-way conversions on 4th and 5th, uh, trying to get the truck traffic out of downtown area in its entirety of the city. We're going to rebuild the housing market, provide um, collaboration with GHA and other entities to prioritize affordable housing in addition to market rate housing. And you know, think about where maybe there might be some unsafe buildings that um, could either be stabilized or, or demolished and be the land bank. So those are the priorities that we understand from the city. We look very closely at the city's uh, most recent comprehensive plan, the goals there, uh, the land uses that are envisioned um, as part of that process and we've rolled back into this process. We've also thought um, through uh, green infrastructure and how the TDD could support um, opportunities for new infrastructure or green infrastructure. That's another eligible expense for the TDD would be um, improving infrastructure, uh, roadways, uh, stormwater, things like that in a way that we can kind of And as we think about a new station, um, the station building itself, a new bus drop off area for the Dickey, you can see in the city to understand parking needs, accessibility needs. Uh, opportunities for um, bus and um, transit interaction with the train, as well as um, what we call micro mobility, things like night share, scooters, bikes, things like that. Uh, integration of the Marquette Trail is important as well. And how all these things work together as part of a long modern uh, multi modal station that relates to the Yeah, I think that. Yeah, so um, the city um, actually um, has a study, and I, I don't know exactly the, um, where the study is in the process, but uh, they have a study to look at potentially converting for the two-way traffic. That's um, an external study that um, I believe the city uh, has kicked off. It, I believe it's on pause as they were finishing the, the U.S. Uh, 12 point uh, construction for the east. Um, but they are working with a firm to understand um, is there an opportunity to create a um, safer environment for pedestrians and a more favorable environment for economic development by considering uh, converting those roads in two ways. Um, it creates a safer environment. It will not necessarily remove all the trucks from the area, but uh, when you have a two way conversion, it's proven that trucks will find other routes. Yeah, that was a so node is it's kind of an area. So if you think about just like pockets of activity, pockets of detail, that was a, a goal of the city's comprehensive plan. Question. Yeah, of course. Um, um, when you talk about changing the route of trucks getting from east to west, or whatever, are you going to have a plan to what they can do? Because their idea of the trucker could be I'm just going to go down third F from the 19th F. 20th Avenue through the middle of a community. So will there be a plan to give them the route to go? I think that's part of the reason why the city's doing this um, for the Fifth Street study is if we can move some trucks from downtown, if we can get them somewhere else they, where they don't negatively get back in the neighborhoods. Right. That's been, um, I'm not involved in that study, okay. but. Um, well, make sure it's, right, right, I think it should be included. Yeah. Like they, they're coming from Michigan City all the industry along the way, 12 and 20, and trying to get to Chicago, trying to get to Whiting, they, they, they need to get that way. Aaron, if you can let me chime in a minute so as not to slow down the mm -hmm. actual study. Some of the things that are being discussed, they are intertwined with the current administration's plan, as well as the incoming, not to speak too freely, incoming administration's plan. But that's a separate study in and of itself, and that when that time comes, yes. that too will go through a public process, but it's not directly, completely, and holistically related to this. Yeah. If I didn't speak out of time. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
<clears throat> okay, so to get to the bathroom. Um, so you all know where the station is, where we are today. And so, you know, we work really carefully. You can see it's, it's kind of taken on a little bit of an organic shape. I'll have a color of inversion here in a little bit, but just to orient folks, um, we're at the library today and right on um, there. The boundary goes up essentially all the way to um, Home Road, the rail line, and you have that leg up Broadway, which goes a little bit further north to captures the um, people train station. We go further east, kind of along 420, to roughly just past the Mock Street in Carolina, and then um, we go all the way uh, west, um, past up the the hospital, capture some of that property, and then south, it's a little bit of a regular boundary that goes down. And so part of the reason for this boundary is to to capture uh, as much of a walkable area from the station as possible for promotion of training development um, in a few of these districts. So you can see, in general, you, know, you can walk most of downtown uh, from one end to another in about 15 minutes, which is, in general, as you think about transit, if you're not hopping on a bus or a bike or a scooter, um, where do you want to walk? And the anchors, think about lots of anchors in, in the downtown area, how we can pull in anchors that may need support from a transit development uh, boundary perspective. Areas that are commercial, both today and historically, and an opportunity to make sure those are captured so uh, that commercial areas could be benefited um, as new businesses may go in. Future. Residential areas. So the goal here is to um, not negatively impact any residential area that um, is unlikely to redevelop, develop, excuse me, but to include areas that the city has identified for um, strategic redevelopment in the future. And industrial areas, a lot of those are tipped on their own. Um, by and large part, we kind of let those um, be their own areas. As part of this boundary effort. So, uh, we've also done a deep dive on vacant, underutilized, and publicly owned. What I mean by underutilized property is you know, things like property parking lots, uh, green space that's not parked. Uh, that's that's how we define it. So, we've, we've tried to incorporate uh, as much of that property in as possible. We've worked to understand where there's tips. We've got a tip that's going to pay to hear he's been working very closely with the city. To understand how those things can work together in the future. And so we're at a draft boundary of about 308 acres. So we're under the 320 allowed by statute. As I mentioned, um, there's an opportunity to expand this in the future. There's other areas that should be included. Uh, the RDA is open to receiving comments. Um, we'll hang out after this meeting to do that. Sorry for that. Work closely with um, the uh, administration and city staff to identify uh, areas that would be closest uh, from a walking perspective to the station um, that have um, a large degree of um, public ownership vacancy um, that um, the city has identified through the comprehensive planning process as opportunities for investment. So the areas that you see that are residential that are included are by and large part areas that um, are very close to the station and the city would like to in the future to be developed with additional residents. Yeah, so the, the areas that are outside, just everybody can hear that, uh, um, of that are residential but outside. So there's two different strategies there. Um, either they're neighborhoods that are further away from the transit uh, and from the core of the downtown area. Um, they may develop in the future, they may develop on their own, or they may be areas that are already seeing reinvestment. Um, and Gary Housing Authority is working very closely um, in the downtown area to, to you know, help us to understand where those investments are already occurring. Carol, is there anything you want to add to that? Uh, no, pretty good, unless anybody had any questions. I just have a question about how 
Well, you go like, first. Oh, okay. So, um, is this based upon the 2019 plan, or is this the city have a new plan? Or? 2019. Yeah, is that based on? Okay. Um, I had the opportunity on Tuesday to ride from Chicago on the South Shore, that off where the circle is in the metro station. And looking out of the window and approaching the station to make our stop, the houses on Third Avenue, a lot of vacant, fallen in homes. And then I see the line there. I just wanted to make sure in this plan. That you are looking at what the visual looks like when a person comes from Chicago going to wherever, what they see when they approach the city, especially the stop. And uh, just want to make sure I see where it says Fourth Avenue and there's a line, Third Avenue and Queen, and this project and all the homes there that we need to use demolition in order to make that whole area look really great. Be horrible to have this great station, and then we pull up every abandoned building in the areas in the first seven blocks. We pulled the boundary up to third right here, okay. up to the edge of the rail yeah. right away. Yeah. So we 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 captured that area. Um, if you think anything's missing, let us know, and we're happy to do that. Um. So I sort of overheard Mr. Barnes talking about why that sort of gray cutout in the central area wasn't included, mm -hmm. but I wanted him to go over that, and I also wanted to ask, how does that relate to the hospital? Um, does the hospital pay taxes? I would have thought they were also not talking. If they don't quite understand. Mm -hmm. Two questions. Mm -hmm. One, she's talking about the area here, which was is the Horseman Home Six development, which was constructed in roughly 2006. That is privately developed. So, knowing that the first round only had 320 acres that you could use. It didn't make sense, that's what you heard me saying over there, to use acreage in this area that's already subsidized. It's already privately developed by the development and performance there. They are looking to do what's called resyndicate, which essentially is a commercial real estate work for refinance. So the point is, this is already self sustaining. It would have been moved. The RDA, the city, and the whole effort and initiative to take this footprint and spread it into other areas that can benefit uh, from the TDD uh, foster development. Hope that answers. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure other people mm -hmm. heard it because it is weird that that area. I've been using the term, uh, hopefully, Aaron and the team, uh, old men, current administration, incoming administration, will allow me and Jeffrey to use it. But I've been using the term cherry picking. Got 320 acres in the first round that you can use. So it, all, it almost becomes, not almost, it really is, what's the highest and best use of said acres? And if those acres or their areas that are already benefiting from initial development, then it will make more sense to move that acre someplace else that can spur the development. Second question was the hospital, which will probably be about. Something is going to happen with the hospital. Don't know exactly what it's going to be. They're very talk about very minimal talks right now that we all may not be privy to. But we wanted to make sure that we captured it because on the other side of the hospital is Force Man High School, which the housing authority happens to own, which is also going to eventually uh, be redeveloped into something. So that's why it's captured inside of the footprint so that it too. You've been horseman. Horseman High School. Horseman yeah. High School. Right there. You can't see it. I can't even here. <laughs> this is old elementary. Okay. This is Horseman High School. Obviously, this is Fifth Avenue and Twitter. And this is Methodist Hospital. It's 555 in that footprint. 555 Coach Street will be right here. That's the police station. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is Aaron's show. Out of all of the events, we'll go to the end. Four, I call it two. Because it's the same footprint. Four, 
that those property owners will see, hey, I can get value on my property because the property next door has been invested in. And a lot of times they'll sell their property at that point. That's one way. Um, and then the other way would be, you know, through the transit development boundary, uh, there may be an opportunity for um, incentives that could help um, a property owner, for instance, to maybe fix up a facade or that's what I was thinking, or, or something like that. Um, there may be an opportunity for that kind of expense. So I'm seeing subsidized yeah. people who can't afford that. Okay. Sure. I, I just wanted to chime in. So um, I'm with the Melton team. Mm -hmm. yeah. So. Um, uh, my name is Chris Harris. <laughs> uh, so here, I just wanted to explain the boundary too. So like you already mentioned, uh, we are collaborating with the communicating with the current administration. Um, wanted to also explain the boundary as well. Uh, as far as the input, and to answer my job, uh, generally I'll just explain why we speed up the wrong way, why we focus on the data. So I wonder if I can take a you know, think in your memory of driving around the city. You're always driving typically either on Fifth Avenue or on Twelfth Avenue. Mm -hmm. That's the first impression that you have. In the city. Yeah. You have an opportunity to focus and encourage development along the Fifth Avenue and Broadway for a couple reasons. A, you know, our transit is a mobile facility. Uh, we also have rapid bus transit along Broadway. So we want to be able to connect our residents and improve our quality of life for our residents to encourage development along Broadway. There's another factor. You know, we have the benefit of being able to change the impression of both the public and visitors of what they see up here because they're primarily going to travel along with that, but they're going to travel along the wrong way. So, how can we encourage development and support reinvesting in this corridor to help improve the image and the character of the nature of the city? Another important aspect when it comes to our tax base, we have density along Broadway. Along Fifth Avenue, when you look at our zoning code, when you look at our tax code, we're poised to generate the most tax revenue along Broadway and along Fifth Avenue. So, what, what, what can happen with this boundary, and then even if we extend it a little bit further to the west or further to the south, we have the opportunity because of the way this corridor is zoned, we can generate more tax revenue much faster to reinvest in a highly visible corridor of our city. People are going to frequently travel, and people are going to want to live near to be able to access transit. So it pays dividends uh, focusing on uh, Fifth Avenue and Broadway. You know, we, we had some discussion about you know public, publicly owned areas or maybe our lower density neighborhoods. It's not really to exclude anyone, but it's trying to help spark the interest of having development along major corridors so then other other investors or even the community to be encouraged that hey my neighborhood my city is changing i want to be a part of that process and then you can see that organic development occur because we have all the development occurring focused along Broadway and that so i wanted to provide a little bit more context in the logic in the shape of the boundary and everything is fluid up for discussion up for feedback because we want to get the public feedback people want to make sure we included union station so again, you know, everything you know is malleable for the public to be able to participate. This is just the first draft, but I just wanted to make sure the logic is understood. So in your first draft, I just want the consideration that if you don't own everything in the yellow, there are people in this town that have been buying property for years and they hold it and don't develop it. And so I don't know if there's ordinances that can be created to stop that moving forward or so, but just be mindful, there's some holders of property here. Absolutely. Absolutely. And a block, that's, you'll have beautiful here and horrible right here. That, that, that's okay. definitely that's on the say. radar because yeah. there are some of our most iconic buildings being held. are being Hostage. held, held hostage, oh. correct. Okay. Right. But if we can encourage developers for the assets that we do own, we have the leverage, like what uh, Aaron with the RDS is trying to share with the public, is that we're being, the city is able to have leverage with its dollars when it comes to future development, what we do own, and then we'll tackle. Those Thank you for your answers. <laughs> uh, you have, I mean, it's a very collaborative process, and we haven't all uh, figured that out. Go ahead, I'm sorry. Okay, so to go back and explain this to sure. uh, citizens, constituents, yeah. um, we were talking about establishing a CBD district. You guys said that 
is not necessarily a tax increase, correct? That's correct. Property tax increase, correct? That's correct. correct. Okay, but it, it is a possibility for uh, revenue increase, correct? That's correct. All right. But those revenues or the benefit of those revenues are going to be administered and handled by the RDA, or is that going to be some kind of joint effort between the RDA and the city, the city, the city of the area? It's going to be for those joint, revenues. It's going to be a joint effort okay. um, that's controlled by a memorandum of agreement mutually agreed upon by both parties that have negotiated. Um, both parties being the city, the city and, and the RDA. RDA. Aaron, just real quick, because this there was a very important slide that I think everybody could have benefited from that will answer uh, the, that will help answer the latest question, ma'am. I, I love that. Uh, the dollars that are extracted from the district will only go back to the district. Yeah. Yeah. But those 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 decisions of where it will be spent is made by the RDA. The city and the RDA. You say the city and the RDA? Yeah, the city, yeah, the city. Okay. The city, the city, he said, the city has an appointment on, well, I'm sorry, the yeah, city yeah. has an appointment on the board that's at, as a part of the RDA board. Okay. So there is representation there. I don't want to steal the thunder of David and David. Uh, <laughs> but <laughs> well, every man, the, go ahead. So with, everything has to go through the city normal process. We come in at the point where, okay, now there needs to be some sort of incentive for the developer, or there is a an infrastructure project, and sewer extension, something like that, needs to be completed for the development to happen. And the city can come to us and say, say, hey, can we use the PD funding to do this? And that would be the question for the argument. Um, it, it has to be a collaborative process because it's something important. So the representative on the board has to speak up for the residents because this is, we have one person from there that's part of that speaking for a whole. So I'm, I'm listening to it, but I'm always a little bit concerned because we have one person. So when it says collaborative, in my mind, how collaborative is it? Well, you also have a you, you'll have a future mayor as well that will have right. a lot of significant influence in that decision as well uh, to be able to garner those dollars, those resources right. that we can reinvest in our TDA. Go ahead. Um, traditionally, with other teams, how much has have funds kind of gone back into the developer versus into like actual community projects? Answer that question. Uh, this is a brand new process, um, and so the kinds of projects that will be funded really is going to be a conversation between the city of Gary and the RDA. Uh, the city of Gary will come to the RDA likely and say, "Hey, we have this trail project we want to fund, and if there's money in the TDD to do it." The RDA will say, "Yeah, that's a great project." Uh, the city may come to the RDA and say, "We have a development partner." And we've got X amount of gap on a parking structure or utilities or sidewalks or something like that. And the RDA would say, that's a good project, let's fund it. So to answer your question, it's going to be a blend. Um, but there has, the, they are brand new. Existed. So, okay. um, you know, this is, is something that is going to play out um, over the next couple of years. But the RDA is very focused on drafting the MOAs in such a way that uh, there is equitable distribution of funds. If I hit the lottery and won $800 million and I wanted back some of the land the federal housing is holding, is that going to be a problem? Actually, that has nothing to do with this. <laughs> <laughs> Can but I get I'll to that a lot of tickets? Only for you will step out. And yeah, so um, the, the Miller station is, is kind of you know, getting 
example of the kind of the level of investment, we hope that the downtown area station is um, more exciting than that station. Oh, I wanted to ask too. Um, so, in developing these, uh, do you guys have to do a process at all? Um, this might be for the financial guide in terms of looking at what the impact it might have on like our general funds budget, since those dollars are the growth dollars aren't going back into the city as a whole. So I'm wondering, is there any analysis on that potential impact? And secondly, I guess the follow-up is, does the city have the ability to approach, to use those in any way that would be used for general services? Or I guess it would have to be limited to general services within the TDD. Is that how it would work? Uh, yep. TDD is a, is a capture of the incremental local property and local income tax, as we stated earlier, is not will not have a uh, impact, a negative impact on our taxpayers from the standpoint of their taxes and so on. Then the um, statute requires a three every three years for the RDA to report to each and every community how the TD dollars are being spent um, and how are they being invested back into, into the TD. The, um, just like a tip, sure, play with tips. The tip <laughs> annually makes a determination whether or not they want to keep all of the increment or give any of the increment back to the base. That is not possible. That works the same way here as well. And so the RDA has the ability to say, to, to say okay, this, these incremental dollars right now aren't being, to use the term that, that Carol used about you know, the highest use of them, maybe the highest use of any given amount. Yeah, I'm just wondering. So, so no, I've it, seen it, how we do, sometimes yeah, have shortcomings have with. Public safety, yeah. you know, dollars and all of that, as I understand, is under you know, general the general fund. So, right. so there is the need there is that for firefighters to give it back to the okay. TDD dollars, just like tip dollars, can't be used for operating expense. I mean, they can only be used for you know art infrastructure type okay. expenses. I have a question for you. Yes, sir. Do you think it could be possible that a public board of citizens could have a seat at the table as well as the city uh, and council, whatever the case may be? Because I think on the short end of it, that's not the short end of it. We always fall short because we don't have no say so. Right. At the table for the citizens, right? And then when all this other stuff is going on behind the scenes, and they also mentioned uh, the meeting that's coming up on September fourteenth, I think October fourth, fifteenth. Well, well, we're yes. talking about a very five days. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, so many people you can't reach. Yeah. A lot of people are not in the internet. A lot of these citizens don't. We should be figuring out down there. And we can get them involved. Because they may not hear none of this. I know you got it on the website, somebody on the computer. But I think this will be all get lost and in this shuffle of these big magnitudes of a lot of money being spent and everything else. So I think my best experience is to create some kind of public board, have a say on the board. It's just my own. Okay. No, I mean, thank you for that opinion. I mean, that's not the way that the that process and procedure was set up through you know, the state right. was created. I mean, it does require um, the two public hearings um, that, that the RD board is having. Um, it does require collaboration um, with the community um, so that if there's not, you know, this the RDA coming in and taking over, it does keep all of the zoning, all the permitting, all that, all of that stays with the community. Right. Where the community has to go through same processes that they're going through now in order to make sure that whatever
follows all the permitting, all the land use. I mean, so this isn't this isn't a part of or this isn't a process that that necessarily takes anything away. It's 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 a process that's attempting to add a tool to the city of Gary. Right. Um, and the other communities that have the GD to encourage development. Right. And I get that. Uh, I'm a developer myself, so I understand. I've been involved in the process. But I just think there should be somebody with the public interest. Yeah. The I, ideally, here's, here, ideally, this is what they were saying. To, to, to change up the terms, the RDA is kind of functioning like a trust fund. That the dollars have been extracted from the tax uh, dollars or revenue that's been generated, be it residential, rental, or commercial. 1%, 2%, 3%. 3%. 3%. The right amount, whatever the mathematical amount is, goes to the RDA. Now, there are 10 people, ideally, that work for you that should hear what you want and then tell one person on their board, the 10 people out of nine council members and the mayor, between those 10 people, they should have already heard what it is that you want. It should already be in a comprehensive plan. And ideally, the one person is basically an emissary carrying a message saying, this is what we want to do. That's, and, and, and so, so the public portion should have already happened. Now, does it always happen that way? Right. No, but this is a new process. Right. But that's up to us to do. Right. Not necessarily them. Go ahead, Chris. I oh, I wanted to point it to Ellis. Ellis. Oh, Ellis. Oh, yes. uh, two questions. Uh, first of all, again, thank you for taking the time to come and uh, being collaborative in the process. Uh, we really do appreciate that. Uh, my two questions. One, um, how fixed is this current map? Understanding that there's some potential for um, change and or add-ons. I appreciate, I heard a little bit earlier you're saying that you feel like we haven't captured some of those pieces uh, as now some of the informed citizens will go and probably drive that area, uh, one of the people who will drive that area. Uh, but uh, as we begin to drive that area and look at that area or even form other people so they can come there on the 12th, uh, how fixated is this map? That's my first question. Uh, is that room for expansion more that we have 12 or so acres to even play with, as well as uh, an additional change of acreage? And that's my first question. Second question to um, go back to the point in which uh, the lovely lady over here made uh, in reference to uh, understanding that some of these tax dollars are pulled from the tax revenue for the city, not pulled from, but at the same time, it's now fixated for this particular area. And speaking of the general service aspect of the public service aspect, more so general services, we're looking at a Detroit model in which they created a downtown, uh, they call them downtown ambassadors, who are almost in a sense downtown uh, general service workers. They didn't work anywhere else. They only cleaned up downtown. They only fixated downtown. They even wore amazing vests that said downtown ambassadors. Um, would that be something that is funded under this TV? I think I can answer the so how fix is the boundary. Uh, we are working closely with uh, current administration. Uh, we're working closely with the housing authority. We're working closely with other stakeholders and representatives that are part of this process. Uh, we can shape the boundary. Uh, we can tweak the boundary uh, up until the second RDA board meeting that is uh, like to take place um, uh, scheduled for October. Uh, so. We, we've got some time to make some changes. We are receiving feedback. Uh, we would ask that um, feedback either be filtered to Dave Bowen, if he's got cards, or um, through the mayor's office, uh, or through the office of uh, redevelopment, um, just to make sure that, that information is going to one place or two places, either with the city or, or with the RDA, and we'll work together to make changes. Uh, at the end of the day, um, we're asking or sign off from um, Mayor Prince's um, office on this. So uh, it really is uh, up to you all to your comments. If you want to add and change, uh, to get those comments over to either the RDA or the Mayor's office and they can work with us to make sure that, that we meet the boundary, that we include anything that might be missing in the building.
project or an area that needs to be invested in. We need to know about it. Uh, the second part of your question is, if you don't get it right, we can expand the boundary again. That's why that mechanism is, is, is built in. Uh, we anticipate the boundary and we think about Michigan City, think about East Chicago, think about Hammond. It's likely that the boundary will get expanded in those areas to which here um, here in, in, in Gary, expand the boundary both in the downtown and in the middle of the area. So um, we don't get it right the first time. Those are the two ways that, that we can work with you all to get it done. And then you asked the question about downtown and Bastards. Uh, Indianapolis has those two, by the way, they're great. Uh, I work downtown Indy. And uh, the, the way I understand uh, how the TV is set up, it functions like a tip. So uh, capital improvements, uh, trails, uh, you know, infrastructure, things like that are eligible. Um, I don't believe operations from a, a payroll perspective or something like that would be eligible to pay those companies. One quick thing, what when, when I left out, David, I'm sorry, because we were just talking about it back here. Why, why David keep bringing up BZA and permitting is because any other development that takes place in the district will still have to go through more than likely a special use variance. It's going to have to go through the planning commission, both of which have public hearings, which are two opportunities that it will be heard. And then those still have to go to council for final approval. So that's three opportunities at public hearing and input. I left that point out. That point. Okay. I, um, my question is going on this shift, talking about staff. I remember one of the slides said that during this time period, the city would make 6,000 new jobs in the area, or we would be talking about in general. Again, I'm sorry. those jobs, what types of jobs? I think what you might. Referring to is we had a slide that talked about people that live and work in the district today. Right. Uh, we do, as as part of um, the overall DOP plan, uh, have some numbers on uh, potential. You know, as development would occur over a twenty year period, uh, numbers of new residences, um, number number of people uh, that may be employed. Um, I have some slides at the end of this deck that we're not going to get to just because I want to give everybody a chance to uh, ask questions and maybe we can have a good conversation. But if you give me your information, I'm more than happy to send you that. And it's going to be up on the website already. It's already on the website. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So I mean, the question was, is if the expansion is already been determined, or if there's if the city, um, um, for the money to use, people would have to this on the sharing of the city. We talked about how, like, this implementation is going to be on the city, how it's built in different areas of the areas of the area. Yeah, just, just so everybody can hear, um, has the TDD uh, expansion been drawn up? No. Um, but we would go through the same process and work very closely with uh, city staff and, and leadership to, to arrive at that. At the time that they're ready, we're not going to do anything when they say we're ready to expand it. So there's no foregone uh, idea to Other questions? Make sure we answer all the questions, and I want to be respectful of everybody's time. Go ahead. It may not even be applicable. Is there anything in the permit design, also the written plan on how things are structured, that could change what we're seeing? So we're going through this now. Is there anything that's written that says, if this did not work, we have the option to do X, Y, Z? The once the boundary is set, it's set. It can be expanded, but not uh, modified. So it can be expanded. We can add things, but we can't take things away once it's in the And I can to Tara's point, I mean, there is one more hearing that we haven't talked much about. I mean, the final approval, these DDDs are not created until the state budget committee repeats it. That's what 
of sets. So that's yet another problem here. So by now we think that's going to be late on. And you can also go to the website at nwipd.com with the contact form there. Um, all that information goes straight to the ground. So, I just wanted to note uh, uh, as far as the boundaries of the district are concerned, the uh, TDD is expiring the 2057. I have a few more slides. You guys want me to go through the slides? Yeah, yeah, sure. yes, right. yes. <laughs> I'll breeze through these. The building does close at eight, so we, uh, well, we got a deadline. <laughs> so, so, so this is about the TOD study that the RDA for the city on uh, got the federal grant for. Uh, at some point in the future, we, we'd love to have uh, kind of a community unveiling of this. Uh, this is really focused on, on the part of possible um, opportunities. So big moves as we see it in the downtown, and this is how really we kind of thought about those development opportunities that, that have helped us create boundary. Property control. So the city already controls a lot of property. How do we leverage that in a way that's positive? Redefining Broadway, um, bringing new investment to Broadway is really important. Making a safe environment, both Broadway, Fourth and Fifth, uh, for people to walk, people to uh, spend time, uh, and then the station is the catalyst, and, and really that is key to um, the investment. Um, there's been success in, in getting state dollars. We hope to get additional dollars that, that can be bundled um, to get this done. This is an earlier uh, map that shows kind of our downtown study area boundary. So you can see a lot of the opportunity sites that we studied here um, for potential redevelopment or investment. This doesn't mean it has to happen this way or that it has to happen on this site, but we were thinking and, and working collaboratively to think about opportunities. And this helped us then arrive at, at that boundary. And this information is all up on the website, but as we think about uh, development, now this development may not happen this way, okay? Uh, this is the block where the station is, uh, where the courthouse is today. Uh, the Genesis Center may stay, be reactivated, or there may come a time in the future where it's redeveloped. We, we don't know, but what we do know is that there needs to be a critical mass of development around a new station, um, whether it goes out a little further or it's centralized in that area. And, and that could see all kinds of economic development. You could see the scale of, of development that we believe could occur in this area. The same is true for uh, the area uh, near City Hall, Hudson Campbell, up to the baseball stadium. Again, a very walkable area near the station. So the, the purpose of these studies is, um, frankly, to get the community thinking about the art of the possible and, and allow for the community to use this information to then have conversations with the private development community about collaborations in this regard. Going further down uh, Broadway, there may be an opportunity to uh, rethink, to fill in some parking lots, uh, and, and to really begin to have that development step down Broadway. So as Tara was talking about that boundary going south, the whole idea is development can step down Broadway um, in areas where um, there has been demolition already, um, or where uh, the housing authority is already active and, and we want to support projects that they're doing today. So this is all about what could happen within this boundary. And there's a lot more information on the website that shows kind of scale of development. Um, we have a lot of developer uh, interest that's beginning to bubble up. Uh, those conversations as, as they occur, as the interest occurs, we're sending those folks to the city. Um, that's kind of the RDA's um, uh, philosophy here. But, you know, the, this is a rendering. Again, these pieces of parts may not occur in these areas. Um, things like the Genesis Center may stay or may redevelop over time. But this kind of gives you an idea of, of how the historic fabric, the historic bank building, the city hall, the, um, the courthouse can play part of the story, the library can play part of the story. 
and the new station really could be that core piece of development, and then the development area could occur around it in a way that could be transformative and, and in a way that um, really allows for the community to embrace uh, the hub or the core uh, in this area. And as we think about a new station, this is just a visual um, to get people thinking, to get people excited. But the idea would be a structure it could be wrapped with development, housing, or other things. Would have a place for GPTC, um, for a modern bus hub, um, ADA accessible uh, train station that would have parking on site and a platform that would go directly um, uh, to a new uh, platform that Nikki would collaborate in. And the idea here is that uh, there's now you know state funding to to, to bring this to life. And so this is really an exciting part of the process. And then as we think about Broadway, there could be new development. This is the courthouse here, for instance. So this is Fifth and Broadway. Fifth and Broadway um, could see new development uh, along this corridor as, as this transport is developed, but done so in a way that you know really is rooted in the, the wishes and desire of the community and the folks that have participated. So that, that being said, there's a lot of good ideas out here. Um, we're happy to hang out for the kick us out of the building um, and check out the website, nwip.com. This presentation will go live um, either tomorrow um, or Monday on the website, on the RDA's uh, social media. We'll work with Rachel to get it up on uh, the city social media. And again, we're happy to receive comments, questions. Um, I can hang out, answer more questions, whatever you want Maybe the question maybe to you. Um, a lot of what's driving this is um, the South Shore trains, the transportation, and people coming there. Have you all ridden the trains in the last year? Yes. You have. You have. Are they? Do they have any plans to maybe rehab the trains mm -hmm. itself? It's not in the process of doing that. Is that going to happen along with this? Specific details. Okay. But, um, they're they're literally pulling the trains into their facilities and taking. All the way down okay. and we got the trains. Yeah, greatly needed. Yes. And secondly, um, you work, did you work on the project of 12 and 20 out in the Miller section of Gary? Um, I worked on it specifically, but I got so you okay. We've had the hardest time once it was completed, diverting the new road from 12 to 20. A lot of people going off the road, accidents, missing right. lights. We don't have any reflectors. It's dark. Making um, writing to agencies that created that, they said the uh, consumer or the driver will need to get used to the travel right. pattern, pattern, which um, just want to have show concern for that and just think about safety issues and things like that. But we still need to address the things going on in the Miller section where 12 and 20 intersects. It's a real day right. there. Right. Okay. That's a question for me. And I'd like to talk to you further about that. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Other questions? Um, answer for the questions we can kind of gather around the board. Really appreciate everyone's time tonight. It's been a really good conversation.